Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning. It's Monday, October 10th. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. I want to give a quick shout out to Mark Austin. You participated in a fishing tournament and he actually placed in the top 100. Yeah, there was uh, it was up in uh, on Stillhouse Hollow uh, near Belton, Texas over the weekend, the Lone Star Throwdown on my second tournament. And I felt pretty good about the finish because there were 187 of us registered. So I was very happy with a 97th place finish. And you competed with your son? I did, yes. So it was a great weekend to be out on the water. Bluebird skies on Saturday for big tournament day. So it was fun getting back out there. It was a great weekend fishing. And good on you because you wore your sunscreen. Not I even did. sunburned this morning. Not <laughs> at all, but it was a beautiful weekend. And that trend does continue this morning as we go outside with live cam. Smart guy, sunscreen, important stuff. I saw the picture, by the way, very impressive. Very Thank you. impressive, yes. Uh, you're right about the skies this morning, beautiful out there. We've, we're off to another great start. This week, though, brings a few more changes than what we were looking at last week. There's a lot to look at here on the weather map. First, let's start with the headlines, though. And as uh, we look at the time lapse, you can see it was a gorgeous sunrise. We've had basically cloud-free skies this morning. We are gonna watch for a few showers out west. And then as we head towards midweek, humidity returns. It's going to get hot. Temperatures will be up into the 90s potentially on Wednesday. And then humidity plummets as we get into Thursday with windy conditions. We'll have to start thinking about fire concerns, grass fire concerns. 71 right now. We've got a few clouds out there in calm winds. Dew point has jumped up to 62, so a little bit humid. And as we look at the live radar, there are some showers and storms well out to our west. I think they probably stay west of our area, but... We will watch places like Del Rio and Eagle Pass that could get a shower or two here over the next couple of hours. We'll keep watch there. Pollen count, ragweed has dropped a little bit today, but still in the moderate category. It's still giving a lot of people fits. So a heads up there on your forecast today. 82 noontime, 87 by 4 p.m., partly cloudy. That'll be our high temperature. and We'll get some uh, good southeasterly winds, a little breezy this afternoon as well. Let's toss it over to Stephen now. How is that morning commute looking? Uh, things have quieted down. Justin, as we get a look around town, 37 at Hackberry, you know, it could be the holiday that folks are staying home and hey, more power to you. But if you have to head out in the next few minutes or so, just be on the lookout. There are a few things that the trans guide cameras aren't capturing. We're first going to take you right over here to State Highway 151 over right there in those eastbound lanes, not far from Petrenka Road. We have a crash there. It's causing a pretty significant slowdown, so you have to watch out. A lot of red is building up out there, which is obviously indicating that traffic is experiencing some trouble. Obviously, we hope everyone's doing OK out there, but just be best to uh, watch out for those first responders taking a drive over here. I 10 westbound at Hebner Road. We had a crash here that was listed for a little while, and in fact, those westbound lanes started to see some of a somewhat of a delay, but now it's pretty much in the green. I'm not seeing anything from the trans guide cameras out there that would indicate that it's still present, but just be on the lookout and make sure that you drive safe. Although it has been a quiet day out on the roadways, we give you a wide look at the map. We know that there's still going to be some of those active road closures, and if you want to stay up to date with what is happening, Grab those phones right now and tap the center of your screen by opening your camera app and scan that QR code that will take you directly to the KSAT traffic page. It has a full list of all the closures that are current throughout the month of October. Guys. Thank you, Stephen. Well, San Antonio police hope surveillance video might give them more clues about a shooting that happened early this morning just northwest of downtown. Around 3.30 this morning, dispatch got a call from a woman who said she was being followed as she was driving. A few minutes later, police got a call for a crash on Fredericksburg Road near Gardena. And officers found the woman with a gunshot wound to the head. She was taken to University Hospital for treatment. And after five years, a woman is set to go to trial today for the capital murder of her four-year-old daughter. In 2017, Jessica Briones took her daughter to a police substation bruised and unresponsive. She told police that four-year-old Olivia was throwing up and wouldn't wake up. The little girl died a day later. Now, at the time, Briones said her daughter would fall a lot and had hit her head on the floor days before she took her to the substation. But investigators found several other injuries that Briones did not give an explanation for. If convicted of capital murder, Briones would spend the rest of her life in prison without the possibility of parole. Well, this evening, the Uvalde School Board is meeting for the first time after the fallout from hiring a former DPS officer who responded to Robb Elementary on May 24th. Well, since then, the entire district police force has been suspended and the superintendent has announced his retirement. 
In an email sent Friday, Uvalde Superintendent Dr. Hal Harrell wrote about his 31 years in education, telling staffers that he wanted them to be the first to know, quote, there will be an item in closed session to consider and discuss superintendent retirement options and transition, end quote. The school board can choose to take action afterwards. Families of the victims have made it clear they didn't ask for this. All they asked was for Harrell to suspend the district officers who were there that day. As far as, you know, how Harold, I know the community is really upset. A lot of people love him, myself included. But it's about leadership right now, and it's about supporting us families. I wish more people in the community understood that. We fight for all the children and the two teachers that lost their lives that day. How should it be fighting for them, too? These were his employees. These were students in his district. The Valley School Board meeting will happen in the Benson boardroom at 6 p.m. We have also been made aware of a rally in support of Dr. Harrell at 530 just outside the boardroom meeting. We will be at both events and bring you live updates on air and online at ksat.com. A reminder that time is running out to register to vote in the November election. Tomorrow is the last day. Now, if you're unsure if you're already registered or not, looking for instructions on how to do so, head to ksat.com and click on the Vote 22 section under the News tab. There you can find our voter guide with all the info you need to know and some helpful links. We also have a sample ballot posted for Bear County residents in case you want to take a look at that as well. And again, here are those key dates to keep in mind. Tomorrow, the last day to register to vote. Early voting starts on the 28th and Election Day, of course, is November 8th. In your other morning headlines, the committee investigating the January 6th attack on the Capitol, planning at least one more hearing this week. And the brand new iPhone 14 and roller coasters apparently do not mix. Nope, and plus the fastest food joint and Charlie Brown has got nothing on this great pumpkin. David Sears is here. Good morning, David. Hopefully we have some pumpkin puns queued up. I don't have a lot of pumpkin puns. Oh, I just got okay. a huge, big gourd, though. Okay. It's this thing is this <laughs> thing is massive. This would not fit in your garden. Okay. That's how it's, big it is. It's the great gourd, Charlie Brown. Yeah. We'll have that for you just a second. But first, we're going to begin with this. Less than a month away from the election, when the House Committee investigating the attack on the Capitol meets on Thursday, more than likely, it'll be their last meeting before deciding what to do with all that evidence they've collected. They will consider whether or not to make a criminal referral to the Justice Department concerning former President Donald Trump's actions on January 6th. In the meantime, Trump was in Nevada, Arizona, holding rallies for Republican candidates in those states over the weekend. He talked about the raid on his Mar-a-Lago home by the Justice Department and being accused of mishandling classified documents. A part of the case is headed to the Supreme Court. The high court wants the Justice Department to tell them whether a special master should have access to the classified documents found at the president's home. They have until tomorrow to make their case. And I hope you just didn't eat because here we go. Uh, this is a weird one. There is a crash detection feature on the new iPhone 14. And yep, you guessed it. A wild ride on a roller coaster will cause it to activate and call 911. It happened when people with that phone rode a coaster at Cincinnati's Kings Island Amusement Park and set off false alarms picked up by emergency personnel in the area. It calls them and a recorded message says that you've been in a crash. They actually got six iPhone messages since the phone went on sale in September. It's also happened with some of the phone owners who rode a coaster at Six Flags Great America outside Chicago. The Apple Smartphone Watch 8 also has the same feature and can set off the alarm as well. There is a simple fix. You put your phone or smartphone watch on airplane mode before buckling in for that wild ride. Hey, if you feel the need for speed when it comes to getting fast food, Taco Bell is where you want to go. If you're looking for accuracy and just overall satisfaction and don't mind a little weight, Chick-fil-A is where you want to be sitting in line. According to the 2022 QSR driver through report, Taco Bell is the fastest drive through. You come and go in 221 seconds. Chick-fil-A is the slowest, but that's because their lines are so long. McDonald's ranks right behind Chick-fil-A, but both fast food stops get high marks and customer satisfaction. Chick-fil-A gets a 93% satisfaction. The overall stats, service is 10 seconds faster than a year ago in the middle of the pandemic since there were so many staffing shortages. However, still got a way to go before we get to pre-pandemic speeds. We're getting food as fast as 45 seconds faster on average back before the pandemic. So they got a little work to do there at those fast food joints. And finally, great gourd, look at this. That's the biggest pumpkin in the entire state of Illinois. 
That dude weighing in at 1,700 pounds plus. Charlie Brown got nothing on that guy. Joe Atkins is the grower. Not only does he grow huge gourds, he also carves them up. Look at there. Pretty artistic. He also grew a 929 pound squash and his second biggest pumpkin is 1,520 pounds. Naturally, the gargantuan gourds are attracting a lot of attention. I was kind of shocked when I saw it. I was like, this is really cool here. I'm surprised they don't have it at the fairground. This guy always seems to have the biggest pumpkin, so he's got some kind of secret sauce. <laughs> you need a big truck to get it to the fairgrounds. All right, so there you go. I want you to see. I want to see one of those in your backyard. Okay, so David Sears, I read about this, and they grow. Those are different seeds. Like that's not any rich, you know, any other pumpkin seed. There, okay. the seeds are actually physically bigger. Oh. Uh -huh. And get this, from these huge, like record-breaking pumpkins, these people sell the seeds, and one seed from last year's pumpkin went for eighteen hundred dollars. One <laughs> seed. Ooh. Man. So you can sell, think of all the seeds in those huge pumpkins. Yeah. They go anywhere from $200 to $1,800 for one seed. You got that. I want to see that in your backyard. Okay. Right. I want to see I all need, that tilling work that I you need, do. I need and, you to um, supply me with the money to buy okay. the seeds. <laughs> and there was something about how much water it took and how long it took to grow. Oh, it was it like thousands degree, of gallons. Like thousands of gallons yeah. to, to water yeah. this so thing. So we need growing. to do a in-house GoFundMe for the yeah, Sarah Costa, the Sarah Costa Pumpkin grow. Fund. Oh my God, that's a lot of pressure with, with the it heat is. and the no rain. <laughs> All right. All right, we'll talk amongst ourselves here and figure it out. David, thank you. Big as your house. Thank yeah. you. We'll be back. 909, 70 degrees still ahead on GMSA at 9. Including the story of some incredible people giving back to the community. A good clean cut will change a person's perspective and their feeling about themselves. Courtney Freeman had the chance to speak with some of the people behind the revamp of the Hair Care Center at Haven for Hope and shares the impact it's having on those who are homeless. Plus, take a look around the San Antonio Public Library Foundation doing so much to strengthen our community and there are so many events coming up. We're going to explain some of these awesome events, how you can step up and help out in just a bit. Welcome back, 913. The San Antonio Public Library Foundation has a mission to strengthen the library in service to our community. Max Massey joining us live from the foundation's headquarters. Max, what's going on with all the fun behind you? Good morning, guys. So every time I look at the table, it seems like something new, cool, and creative pops up. I'm joined here with Amy. So Amy, tell us what we're all looking at here. Well, these are a lot of the things that people will be seeing at our Katrina Ball on October 22nd. We have Alabrije, who are made by a local artist, and they will help us decorate. Um, we're a Dia de los Muertos themed event, but we're focusing a little bit more on those spirit animals this year. And the candles that are on the table are VIP gifts that our VIPs will be receiving, and those are done by a different local artist. Uh, depicting some of those really cool, fantastical creatures. All right, so for those who don't know what the foundation is, what are you guys? How do you help out the community? The San Antonio Public Library Foundation supports the library system in service to the community. So that means we do a couple of different things. We raise money and help the libraries to fund programs that the city can't with just the normal city budget funds. Um, but we also run a couple of our own internal programs focusing on early literacy. So we have a literacy caravan, a retrofitted RV that goes out to underserved areas and um, sees young kiddos that um, we really just want to get them excited about reading and excited about going to the library. Okay, now tell us a little bit more about the Katrina Ball. How can people get involved? Well, they can go to our website at saplf.org and purchase tickets or a table. We still do have a few tables left. They can also access our silent auction, which should be available on the Monday before the event, which will be next Monday, one week from today. Or they can just make a donation. All right, Amy, thank you so much. Guys, before we go, I want to give a shout out to Owl Lisa. Here we go. I already texted our Alicia Barrera about it. She told me, you know, put a bid in, see if we can bring this back to the KSAT studios. But if you guys have any questions about the event, about the foundation, we're going to have all those answers on the news at noon and, of course, KSAT.com. Guys, back to you. I get it. Owl Lisa. Owl Lisa. I get it. All right, Max Massey, <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> Outside with live cam, beautiful weekend, and uh, we've got wonderful weather for a lot of folks that are 
off today for the holiday and Justin Horn joins us here at the anchor desk. Good morning to you, sir. Good morning, guys. Uh, it was a nice morning. Uh, we Did your girls have school today? They don't. Okay. They don't. So yeah, it, uh, it's a nice day to be on about. This week's going to be a little more interesting though than last week because we didn't have really much going on last week. This week we've got a front to talk about some hot temperatures, humidity goes up and down. So we'll get into that in just a second. First, though, I want to show you this picture in case I connect. Beautiful full moon last night. If you checked it out, it was it lit up the sky. It was almost bright outside. But I got a trivia question for you guys. Here you go. Speaking of the moon, last night we had the full moon. What was it called? Already, uh, oh. already, we already heard about this. Oh. So Mike, I'm sure Mike. Uh, we don't, we don't want to spoil it. Okay. Okay. Uh, because it was the Buck Moon. <laughs> wrong uh no, um, no correction mark austin yes i know the right answer it was the beaver, beaver moon <laughs> Close. see i knew you guys knew see mike does a great job with these full moons like he's like the you know he knows all about it so we're gonna uh, go with b hunter's moon you yes. got it right yay yes the harvest moon occurs closest to the september equinox it can fall in september or october the hunter's moon always falls in october it was named because people in the northern hemisphere prepared for the coming winter by hunting. So there you go. It was beautiful last night. Now, as we look at the current situation, we've got a flash flood watch or flood watch, I should say, out across West Texas. That's where the heavy rain will be today. There is some heavy rain setting up already at this hour. We showed you some of that is trying to work into our western counties this morning. We'll zoom in a little bit closer. You can see some of those showers trying to work their way in the Valverde County around Del Rio. Eagle Pass, you can see a shower. So that's the one spot in our viewing area that may actually get some rain today. And we'll keep an eye on the radar for you. Otherwise, here in San Antonio, we're pretty much cloud free and certainly rain free. Temperature 71 degrees at the airport, 72 stents in 71 Kelly, 67. That's the cool spot over that Randolph in very light winds. 60s and 70s at this hour, 65 Kerrville, 68 Uvalde. There were some 50s on the map earlier, but numbers are starting to jump up and we're starting to warm up pretty quickly. Close to 70 for most places here around San Antonio. And dew points are also jumping up, so it's a little more humid. It's not overly humid, but we're starting to jump into the muggy territory with dew points in the 60s today. And as I mentioned, dew points will be all over the map this week, and I'll show you that in just a second. 82 noon time today, 86 by 3 p.m. We'll call it partly cloudy. Winds could get a little bit breezy in the afternoon. Southeast Julie, anywhere from 10 to 15. 87 is our high temperature, and then we fall back into the 70s and 80s this evening. And I mentioned those dew points. Take a look at this. So. We see the dew points climb as we get into Wednesday. Dew points are in the 60s, fall off with our frontal battery. It gets very dry Thursday. We get some windy conditions, and we'll have to watch for a fire danger on Thursday. And then those dew points build back up by the weekend, and that could lead to some more rain chances. So a lot of ups and downs here in the forecast. Let's look at uh, what we think the clouds and rain will look like today. Again, some showers and storms out west, and then I think we'll see some clouds tomorrow morning and then uh, partly cloudy skies during the afternoon. Tomorrow's probably a quiet day. As we get into uh, Wednesday morning, clouds fill in, and then by the afternoon, still pretty quiet, but here comes our front, and that does bring with it a 10% chance of rain. That's it. I wish I could give you better rain chances. Uh, with this front, but the best shot's going to be east and southeast of San Antonio. And then once it moves through, we get the drier air, as I showed you. It doesn't really cool down, though. 88 Tuesday, 92 and humid on Wednesday. The front drops humidity. We get some windy conditions Thursday, 89. 88 Friday after starting off in the 50s, so that'll be a nice start. Then by the weekend, we're back to humid conditions again. 90 Saturday, 89 Sunday. We will put in some small rain chances Sunday. And beyond that, rain chances look a little more promising next week. But uh, all something to watch uh, this week with that front. Uh, again, a lot going on in the forecast, which is nice to see. It's so rare that we are actually all at the desk anymore after all this time that we have to beg Justin and to come I, back. And look, I, I have forget. to stand next to Justin Horn. <laughs> Sorry. Again, thank you. <laughs> Is that better? It's, it's better. Better, all way. Yeah. better for everybody. <laughs> 920 right now, 71 degrees. Well, the latest jobs report showed a slightly higher number than last month. It, than expected. We come back a look at how the manufacturing industry is creating more jobs for people and bringing Made in America back. Nine twenty three. There's some good news for the economy. Made in America appears to be making a comeback. A post pandemic manufacturing boom has increased profits and created a lot of new jobs. But as Max Massey explains, there's still a demand for more skilled workers. 
they gave me an official offer today. One open position filled. This is our open requisition job book. Countless more though, still open. The number of jobs is just, it's just incredible. At this training facility in Pittsburgh, job seekers are learning new skills to seize on post pandemic spikes in manufacturing. What's really heightened the issue of the, of the big need and the big demand for these types of individuals is with the coupling of COVID and the individuals that were already looking to retire in the next three to four years. Neil Ashball is president and CEO of New Century Careers. Come back. It's a nonprofit program for adults who are looking to enter the industry in the most competitive environment in years. We have individuals that are completing these skilled training programs and yet are going out on five, six, seven interviews. And those companies are all competing for that single source uh, skilled individual. Since 2020, U.S. manufacturing has increased its profits by more than $200 billion. And that means it's now offering hundreds of thousands of new jobs every month. So what's behind this latest boom? At the Jenison Corporation, workers are busy making everything from firefighters equipment to construction machinery. Hayden Jenison says recent supply chain issues overseas have meant more customers. It was taking months for parts to not only get manufactured, but come across. And they decided that they were willing to pay U.S. manufacturing pricing to be able to get that much faster. Pricing and product demands, they've changed drastically in recent years. When service industries became scarce over the pandemic, demand for consumer products and, of course, PPE and medical equipment, they kept factory workers essential. Among the average consumer, uh, we did see that, hey, there's a real value for American-made products. Industry expert Eric Asoda says new technologies are also paving the way forward. We often take a look at the images of manufacturing and we see the sparks flying in a welding environment or perhaps it's a little bit uh, dingy, dark. But by and large, our manufacturing uh, jobs today are high tech. But today's techs are also requiring higher salaries and more flexibility. We've had to significantly raise our wages to stay competitive in the industry. Jenison says there's enough work to staff another full shift at this facility alone, but even at 20 to $30 an hour, finding the right team has been very difficult. Hiring has been a problem since 2020. Hiring experienced candidates that understand the industry and understand what they're doing has been very difficult. Newly trained candidates like Ishmael are glad to be coming in now. Laid off during the pandemic, people like him are in high demand. After that happened, it was a little rough and tumble, but I landed here and I'm actually pretty happy with how things turned out. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. So according to the latest numbers from the Bureau of Labor Statistics, the economy added 263,000 jobs in September. That's slightly more than economists had estimated. Right now, just about 927, 72 degrees. There's more ahead on TMSA at 9. Including a look at all the highlights from this weekend's football action. David will be back with RJ to recap those top games. But before that, family and friends of a missing man believed to have been found dead over the weekend are not happy with Live Oak Police. Why they say they had to take matters into their own hands. 930 friends and family upset with the Live Oak Police Department after their loved one was found dead Sunday morning. And at, at one time, the man found dead was considered a person of interest in the death of a woman found three weeks ago in the same area by police. Case at Alyssa Cole spoke with those who helped find the missing man's body and tells us why they are so frustrated. And they kept on saying that either it was tr garbage, garbage yeah. or a dead animal. No, that's my brother-in-law laying in the, there. Angelique Hammond is the sister-in-law of missing man, 52-year-old Keith Hammond. She says Live Oak Police insisted a strong stench coming out of this tunnel was not what she thought it was. We have been on the, co on the phone with the police every, if not every day, every other day, begging begging for something. The family of Hammond says they knew his body was in one of these tunnels outside of Methodist Hospital Northeast. But after pleading with police, friends and family took it upon themselves to search for his body and they claim they found it within minutes. And you can still walk down and his body's laying there just badly decomposed, but He's, you know, know no, nobody took any effort to actually to look down there. The medical examiner's office has still not confirmed that the body is Hammond's, but the group says they recognize his boots. 
Family and friends say Hammond was last seen with his girlfriend, 50-year-old Laura Brasino, on September 13th. Brasino's body was found just days after the fact, but not Hammond's. They say police dropped the ball on this investigation. You didn't do your job. Yep. that we pay you to do. I can tell you we have been out here at least two or three more times checking the area. Uh, obviously, we did not find the person. Live Oak Assistant Police Chief Matt Malone says their work isn't done. We're here with this today, so we're trying to piece this all together. Alyssa Cole, KSAT 12 News. Assistant Chief Malone said they are still looking into the cause of death, and we're still waiting for the medical examiner's office to identify the body as Keith Hammond. In your other morning headlines, a city in Ukraine is still reeling after a Russian missile strike killed over a dozen people. It came after Russian President Vladimir Putin accused Ukrainian forces of blowing up a critical bridge connecting Russia to the occupied territory of Crimea. At the moment, Ukrainian forces are capturing more territory in the country's south and eastern regions. The jury selection starts today in Los Angeles for the second sex crime trial of Harvey Weinstein. The former Hollywood movie mogul faces 11 charges, including sexual assault of five women between 2004 and 2013. If convicted in California, Weinstein faces a life sentence regardless of the outcome of his New York case. Jury selection is expected to take two weeks with opening arguments planned for about October 24th. And we can get a better idea of how the recent stock market is affecting the profits of Fortune 500 companies. The third quarter earnings season kicks off this week and investors have been concerned over the recent interest rate hikes from the Federal Reserve. So the S&P 500 has fallen 24% so far this year. Outside with live cam, 73 degrees, a beautiful day here in South Texas. We look out by the airport. This time of year, we're always on the lookout for the next cool or cold front. Depends on the situation. Yeah, we're going to get a front coming up Wednesday night into Thursday. It does make a difference when it comes to humidity. Bless you, by the way. Uh, <laughs> but uh, the... the the humidity drops off quite significantly as we get into Thursday and Friday. Let's take a look at the satellite picture and we can see some showers and some clouds off to our west. Some rain trying to move in around Del Rio. This is pretty light rain, but nice to see rain on the radar. You can see the cloud covers just to the west of San Antonio. So we're going to see more clouds shifting in later this afternoon. At the moment, though, we've got clear skies and it's uh, that rain you see out west stays out west. We don't get any here. Here's the dew point trend today. Dew points are relatively high right now. We've got dew points in the 60s. They fall off this afternoon. We get dew points in the low uh, 50s and 40s, and then they build back as we head into tonight. And next few days, we'll see quite a bit more humidity. 82 degrees noontime, partly cloudy. We're up around 87 this afternoon with uh, some breezy southeast chilly winds anywhere from 15 to 20 miles per hour in some cases. And then tonight, we fall back down into the 80s and eventually 70s. Guys. Pro football coverage. Powered by Thanks, Davis Justin. Law Firm. It was an action-packed weekend in the sports world. David and RJ here break down the Cowboys and Longhorns wins and a tough loss for the Aggies. Woo! Uh, yeah. Still hurrying on that one there. We'll get to that one Justin, <laughs> Justin's going to leave, I think. Crossing his <laughs> Justin, He's still here, but his arms are crossed. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. He said, i got to leave the rough room. Rough couple of weeks for uh, Justin's Aggies right there. <laughs> Let's but, start with the good, though. Yes. Cowboys. How about them Cowboys? Woo! Cowboys, Rams in L.A. You think, hmm. I tell you what, there's Cowboy fans all over the country, but there are a lot of Cowboy fans in, in there, I and mean, they couldn't even hear their own signals. And look at this. This is like the the opening drive. Yeah, opening drive here. A sack, and then uh, Tank Lawrence takes that in for the touchdown. You mentioned the crowd, though, David. I, I would say it was about 50-50 Cowboys, maybe even yeah. more Cowboys fans than Rams fans in the building. This was the one big play that the defense uh, gave up to L.A. yesterday. Yeah, and that was, that was, a, that was a big one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it definitely was. But they got it back right here. Look at this. There you go. Just, just watch Pollard go. Look at the, <laughs> I was afraid that the guy behind him was going to come try to do that to him, mm -hmm. and he turned, kind of like angled back towards the center of the field, like, well, that guy. Can, yeah. Catch it was him like out. a movie run. It was like yeah. missed block, missed. I mean, missed that tackle, nice. missed tackle, yeah, missed tackle. Great stuff. <laughs> Absolutely. Great stuff. Uh, but uh, what can you say about this guy right here, David? Micah Parsons. I mean, he is actually in the MVP conversation right now oh, yeah. with Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes. I mean, he has been dominating. He apparently for the like this year. like strangers groin and said, yeah. "I'm playing because I'm the star." and I'm going out there and he did I and mean, you could tell there's a couple of times he was like in some serious pain mm -hmm. and he still got to the quarterback a couple three times so you know that Ooh. was that was it so he's now the now the quarterback controversy is, is uh -oh. starting to pick up here a little steam go. here because mm -hmm. yeah. Dak's getting better it. Cooper Rush is now 
four and oh four and oh this, this season four and yeah. oh so yeah. the the cowboys lose the first game of the season cooper rush comes in to replace a injured Dak prescott and he's four and oh yeah with some impressive wins too yeah. i mean they beat the giants on the road this game here on the road yeah. as well kind of a home game i guess for the cowboys but also the win against cincinnati early on and we're talking about this earlier cooper he's just sticking with yeah. the game plan that's all he's doing didn't throw for a lot of yards yesterday didn't need to because he knows the defense has been playing great and special teams has been playing yeah. well except for that well, long snap except for that long snap i don't know <laughs> guy was just like anxious to snap it yeah. before, before holder wasn't even paying attention hit him in the arm that had to hurt <laughs> um in case you guys missed it that was like that's why there was it was Six nothing yeah. after that touchdown to start the game. Mm -hmm. um, they had 160 something yards rushing right. on the ground. Well, they mm -hmm. did get the Pallard long run, but that, where, where's that been all year? That's what that's what makes them yeah. better because they've got two running backs who can do that and take the pressure off the quarterback. The thing about Dak coming back, you don't know if he's coming back against Philly this weekend or maybe Detroit next weekend. Philly. The yes. problem is, is he going to feel like he's got to prove something mm. because Cooper Rush. Has it's going to be an interesting this team week. to, yeah. you know, um, tie for first in the Eagles NFC. right now. Yeah, Eagles, no. the only undefeated team right now in the NFL, no. and they are hosting the Cowboys. Yeah. It's going to be a night. heck of a be, game, yeah, guys. Great, great game. And so. I don't think there's a controversy. I think Cowboys are just one of the few teams that are – uh, in a luxurious kind of mm -hmm. way, feeling very good about their backup option at this point. Oh, there's a controversy. Yeah. <laughs> if, he beat, no if, controversy. if he plays on a positive side yeah. uh -oh. and beats Philadelphia, there will be a con controversy. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, trust okay. me. Here we go. Uh, we want to talk some Texans here because you know what? They Real got quick. their first win of the season. Shout out to the Texans here taking care of business out there in Jacksonville. I think they've beaten the Jags like uh, eight straight times. Yeah, it's like um, they ought to play the Jags every week. Yeah, <laughs> there we go. They, that's one of the few teams they can win every time. Um, not many uh, scoring plays in Oops. this one, David. But, but look, uh, at, look at this Pierce. run. This is a rookie. There you look go. At this guy. Yeah. This kid is like, I have not. Watch this. He finally yeah. gets a block right there, a little help. <laughs> All the way Man, that guy, it was mm -hmm. just like. Boom. And yep. then he says, well, okay, just give it to me again. Yeah. That was the only touchdown That's again it. there. Texans win this no, one 13-6. They get an interception here late against Trevor Lawrence. So nice win for Houston. First win of the season. Remember, they got that tie. But yeah, this, uh, Trevor Lawrence good. hadn't gotten a whole lot you. better. Yeah, he's, he's, this year he's struggling a little bit here. Year, yeah, okay. All, All right, right now college. let's get to college. Mm -hmm. let's get, I don't know go. what this was, but <laughs> right, apparently Oklahoma did not know Texas was on the schedule. Or Texas <laughs> knew they were on the schedule. Yeah. And, uh, something happened, man. Texas just rolled these guys. This was a Red that, River beat down. Yeah. Yeah, this was rough. Schooner had a flat. <laughs> there we that go. Deal. Man, oh, man. Um, so that, that's I mean, just we could just run highlights all day. And this, yeah, and, yeah. You know, but we're getting we're getting look at this. Look at this move. Yeah. Uh, look at that. UT rolls all look over Oklahoma, obviously taking out a lot of frustrations from the past couple of years. Johnson. Oklahoma, we said, are they really this bad? I, I think they're look, really well, look, this bad. Yeah, yeah, well, there's your answer right there. I was a little jump the pass and the guy didn't even know it was coming yeah. and picked off. I mean, that's just like that's some bad, bad. Football right there. All right, play calling here. We right. switch over to the a and the Aggies game versus Woo, Alabama. Look at Justin. Here we go. I like watching Justin's expression. <laughs> He's still upset about this. Matt, you know what? a and hung Why would in you there. Throw that ball over uh, there. Yeah. a and wow. hung in there. It's 20 yeah, to 24 well, loss. Had a chance to win this game late. Yeah, and, uh, you know, Jimbo Fisher said they made the quarterback made the right call. He ended up not running the right route, but uh, he said that it was a it was a good decision. Well, there. look, he wasn't even in the end zone when he caught it. No, he had yeah. three seconds left in the game. <laughs> what was amazing to me was the is uh -oh. the series before. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're gonna we'll, we'll, we'll get to UTSA. UTSA yeah. just rolled again, man. These yeah, guys they are tough <laughs> in this conference. They should win this conference again. But back to the AM game real mm -hmm. quick. The yes. series before they got two penalties and backed mm -hmm. up. They were going to go for it on fourth yeah. down and they ended up kicking the field goal and the field goal ended up putting them in a great spot mm -hmm. because they got the ball back after they held mm -hmm. Alabama and then they go right down the field and they can score and win. They don't have to tie or anything. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> But then UTSA, it was, uh, yeah, UTSA some very just, interesting just, coaching decisions there. Yeah. Uh, so the Aggies now back-to-back -back losses, but again, Ooh. tough loss there yeah. against Bama. No Bryce Young in that one, so uh, but still a very competitive match. Undefeated there. Tennessee yeah. next week. But but back yes. to uh, UTSA real quick. Come on. Uh, <laughs> Uh, UTSA takes care of so Western Kentucky trouble. here at home. You gotta come out here and get me. <laughs> um, and Wait a the minute. Roadrunners hit the she comes. mark of the I, season. I gotta go. <laughs> They're now four and two so far, <laughs> and uh, come out undefeated here. here in Conference USA play. So nice job there by the Roadrunners getting that win here at home. It was I was there at that game. It was a nice little crowd that they had at the dome. Nice, fantastic. Um, Spurs. You know what? Hey, we're we're going all over the map here. Yeah, Spurs they uh, they lost their preseason game. All right. So before before oh, three before Alex comes out here just yeah David basically just did a talk yeah. to the hand to our producer he sure did yeah <laughs>
Right. He's coming in hot this Monday. Yeah, He's all yeah. fired up. We're ready to go here. Yeah. Good uh, stuff. I mean, Spurs, you know, look, it's going to be a frustrating <laughs> season. <laughs> You're going to get us in trouble. Oh, no. Did not mean to do this. Okay. We got to go. show some Spurs, don't we? <laughs> do we? <laughs> we got the Pelicans okay, yesterday. Oh, oh my goodness. Yeah, yeah, this yeah. Is, this um, hey, Doug McDermott had. I'm nice going to play on. bartender here and cut you guys off. <laughs> okay. I think we need to be cut <laughs> off. Right. Had enough. Yeah. Hey, yeah. by the way, Patrick Mahomes is quarterbacking tonight. Ooh, Kansas City right. plays on Monday Night Football right now. <laughs> Former Texas Tech Red Raider. Right. Oh, boy. They're going to go <laughs> commercial on break here yeah. without our control whatsoever. 942, 73 degrees. Congratulations, Justin. You have 10 seconds for weather later. <laughs> we'll be right back. Welcome back. We start with uh, the radar right now, and uh, we can see there are some showers uh, off to the west around Del Rio and Eagle Pass along the Rio Grande. Uh, and, and these showers uh, may move a little bit closer to Del Rio here next uh, couple of hours. We may also see a few ice showers around Eagle Pass. So good to see some rain on the radar, but I'll tell you, all of this stays west of San Antonio. We're not expecting any rain here today. Uh, and as we look at the big picture, you can see where the showers and storms are setting up. We still have an upper level load starting to move north and it's helping to give lift across West Texas with some showers and storms and that's where flash flood watches are in place. You can see the showers lining up from the Permian Basin all the way down to Del Rio as we just showed you. And then the cloud cover is starting to work east. So we may see some clouds out of this, but I don't think we see any rain. We'll go partly cloudy here in San Antonio later today and there's a little closer look. The clouds have made it as far east as Bandera and Hondo, not quite to San Antonio yet. As we look at the time lapse, it was a gorgeous start. We had a nice sunrise, few clouds out there, a few mid-level, high-level clouds, and temperatures right now 71, calm winds, and we're looking at uh, just a few clouds. 67 Kerrville, 66 Rock Springs, 68 New Braunfels, 74 and Gonzales around San Antonio. We've now made it into the low 70s in most locations, one exception being Randolph, where it is 67 there. Dew points now into the low 60s. Uh, this number has been rising. We have a little more mugginess in the air, but these numbers fall off this afternoon. So by the afternoon hours, it won't feel as as humid. 85, the forecast high Canyon Lake, 87 here in San Antonio, 88 Elmendorf, Somerset, It'll be 85 in Kennedy today. Gonzalez. Dew point trend over the next six days, and I think this really does tell the story because we have a frontal battery that comes through Wednesday night into Thursday morning. We get the humidity jumping up. Uh, quite a bit on Wednesday, and then it falls off of that front. We get two points in the low 30s, windy, front comes through. There could be a little bit of a fire danger on Thursday. That's something I want to watch. But after that, humidity increases pretty rapidly again, and by the weekend, we're back into humid conditions, and that could lead to more rain by late in the weekend and then early next week. That's the hope anyway. Let's look at the forecast here. And by this evening, again, just a few clouds. There still could be some showers and storms out west. And then by tomorrow morning, we start off with some clouds. Tomorrow looks to be pretty quiet, just some partly cloudy skies in the afternoon. Temperatures pretty similar to today. And then as we get into Wednesday, we start off cloudy. And then by uh, the afternoon hours, we'll be watching some showers starting to develop on that frontal boundary to our north. And then the front slides through. There's a 10% chance of rain with the front. That's it. We can't give you any more. That's just the uh, conditions aren't there for it. There may be a few showers and storms along the front to our east. Maybe a shower here in town. Uh, we can only hope with uh, as dry as things are. Meantime, we have Tropical Storm Julia still going. Uh, you remember this started in the Caribbean and then made its way over into the Pacific now. And uh, it, it really is starting to fall apart. And there's going to be some remnants of this that will still cause some heavy rain around Guatemala and parts of Mexico. Uh, but this is beginning to fall apart. But it, it did make it into the Pacific and kept its name because it kept its center of circulation. Uh, ex uh, the extended forecast here, 88 tomorrow, 92 on Wednesday. There is a 10% chance rain Wednesday into Thursday with the frontal boundary. Windy with low humidity on Thursday, 89, 88 Friday. And will be partly cloudy over the weekend with a small chance of rain Sunday and hopefully some better chances early next week. We'll be right back. 952. A haircut can seem like such a simple thing, but for those experiencing homelessness, a physical makeover can make big goals become reality. So two teenagers realized that, and as Courtney Freeman tells us, they helped turn Haven for Hope's Hair Care Center into a beautiful space with dignity in mind. On a Wednesday afternoon, Jason Garrett takes a seat in a comfy leather salon chair. Tenured barber James Brown prepares to showcase his skills. 
This could be any moment at a typical upscale barber shop, but it's anything but ordinary. The conversation, purpose, and location are all connected by one thing, homelessness. I started falling behind on bills. I lost my vehicle. So I was actually living out of my vehicle for the two years I've been here in San Antonio. Garrett lives at the Haven for Hope shelter where this hair care center just got a huge makeover. I am now working as a park enforcement officer at the airport due to a haircut I received here. You heard that right. He landed a great job, a major life step, and credits a haircut. A good clean cut will change a person's perspective and their feeling about themselves. You go to the business world, you look presentable. A haircut, suit, tie, shoes, makes the biggest difference in the world. Brown knows that because he lived at Haven 12 years ago when the shelter first opened. The average person is only two or three paychecks away from being homeless. And, and so you got to look at it as so many things can happen to a person that you can't judge. Six years ago, he renewed his license as a professional barber and began giving back, running the hair care center for free. This is what the center used to look like. But about 10 months ago came Jack and Emma Heaney, Clark High School teenagers and dedicated boy and girl scouts. During a visit to Haven for Hope, Jack saw the hair care center. And I saw it wasn't in the best condition and it, it could really make an impact on the people who lived here. He decided to make it his Eagle Scout project and it quickly turned into a family affair. Emma jumping in as part of her gold award project. He did all of the remodeling and I had a photographer come out and we got some awesome artwork and we got all the supplies in here to get it going. Almost everything you see in here is new. The paint, the art, the back bars, the supplies inside, these big chairs and a whole closet full of supplies. Brown hopes the updates will inspire other barbers to come volunteer with him. Get me some recruit. Right. We can get in here and we can really help the people. It's kind of surreal thinking that the two of us made such a big impact on this community. The proof of that impact is in the reveal. A silent moment for Garrett as he observes the new man in the mirror. It takes a lot of years off, off of you and makes a person feel more normal. Normal essentially meaning worthy, dignified, accepted by a community that Garrett now knows truly cares about him and his future. Courtney Friedman, KSAT 12 News. Garrett looks great there. So if you'd like to donate or volunteer to work at Haven for Hope Hair Care Center, you can call the volunteer services, that number on your screen right now, or email volunteers at havenforhope.org. Final look at weather. Here's Justin. And temperatures are making their way up through the 70s. We're still watching a few showers off to the west, but they stay west of San Antonio. 87 today, 88 tomorrow, up to 92 by Wednesday. Not only will it be hot, it will also be humid. Small chance for shower with a frontal battery Wednesday night and a Thursday morning. We get lower humidity on Thursday, but it's still fairly warm. Is there a big front in the long range forecast yet like a, at all? A non quotable we're, front. I don't know about that, but we're looking at early next week maybe for some better rain chances. Okay. We'll take that. Thank, Thank you, Justin. Justin. Yeah. Cheeks. <laughs>